Okay, so anyways, TV spinoffs. Uh, Sean, what have to say about TV spinoffs? Uh, my whole thing is uh, TV spinoffs is, uh, what's, I guess what's really frustrating is, like right now they're talking about spinning off uh, Sal Goldman uh, from Breaking Bad into his own series. Uh, I heard about just, that. The, 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 the lawyer from Breaking Bad. And it's like, I mean, when you look at spinoffs, I mean, you can look at Frasier, which was a huge spinoff uh, of, of course, Cheers. And then you look at Joey, which was a huge failure. Fail. I mean, the only real successful s- spinoff that has like lasted the longest is uh, The Simpsons. Right. What are they on? Over season twenty, and I mean they were a spinoff of uh, the Tracy Allman show back uh, in the eighties. Back in the eighties. You know what though? It's funny you said that about uh, Joey being a complete fail. It, my wife and I, we actually watched that show when it was on, and, and we enjoyed it. We thought it, we thought it was pretty decent. You know what I mean? There was. I mean, certainly there is. You could complain about a lot of things in it, but it was for the most part, it was it was entertaining. You know, for the season and a half or whatever that it was on. So. Yeah, see, but were you were you hardcore f- f- uh, Friends fans before that? I was. Uh, I, 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 I was not. I till this day still need to sit down. My wife and I will sit down and watch a show or two of Friends when you know it's on. You know, many channels uh, every night. And we've said, hey, listen, we need to sit down and watch it from start to finish. I never have. So I enjoyed the show for the one or two shows that I would watch here or there. Yeah. But didn't really know a whole lot about the characters themselves other than that it was a fun, entertaining show. And when Joey, you know, came on, uh, my wife and I were, were both watching, you know, different shows that we would tape on the DVR, and that was one where, you know, it was, it was hyped, and we said, well, you know, that's fine. I mean, it was pretty funny on Friends. We'll check it out. And I mean, we enjoyed the series, so. I wonder, the reason I brought it up, if you were hardcore Friends fans, is because I wonder if sometimes spinoffs don't do well, because, um, <laughs> I wonder if sometimes uh, spinoffs don't do well because the core audience is what's following that show, and they're not happy that you've made changes, you know, to the dynamic or whatever. I haven't seen Joey, but I'm a Friends fanatic. That's the weird thing. It's like Friends is the one show I've seen all ten seasons. Oh, uh, gosh, probably, probably seen each episode at least at least seven or eight times. Oh, it's, wow. The thing is, is like I had sat down um, when I was unemployed. <laughs> Jamie and I used to sit and watch like Friends for hours all the time during the day because she didn't start teaching until the afternoon. So we'd watch Friends for like hours, and she'd already seen all the episodes. So when she would go to work, Jordan, Jordan our uh, Latuzek's and I's brother, we used to sit down and, and, and then watch all afternoon and night. Mm-hmm. So I burned through the first ten seasons in probably, I don't know, a few weeks. And um, and then after that, it was just one of those things where like a lot of times at night when my wife and I are laying in bed, we'll just we'll throw something on, and it was usually like a Friends DVD. So like from that... Uh, I don't know. I've we've gone through the season so many times. I don't even. I don't even know. I don't even know how to count it. But uh, it's ridiculous now because you know, like when you've seen a movie like a dozen times or more, and it gets to the point where like you know every line, and like it's you're that irritating guy to to be around to watch the movie because you're always finishing lines and shit. Like it's it's like that for us with ten seasons of content. Like it's it's the most bizarre thing. That, like I can still remember such specific punchlines and shit. <laughs> It's okay, friends sucked anyways. <laughs> so, you know how Sean hates everybody? Tom hates everything. <laughs> well, me, me and Tom, I hate well, everyone. I'm not a fan of friends. Time felt a different story. I felt friends was a little too white. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was way too white. It was pretty white. <laughs> it's very Elaborate. white. I was Seinfeld, okay. that you're less white. All right, all right. For example, she's yeah. the most That's outgoing true. character, yet she's very normal to our standards, correct? Who? Phoebe. Phoebe. The blonde. Phoebe? The, the girl that like, plays the guitar and hangs out with homeless people. She yeah. is very normal. However, she is like the most outrageous character on that show. Outrageous. Whereas on Seinfeld, for example, every character but actually Jerry is completely outlandish, out of the box. George Costanza reminds me of so many random people. The Kramer, uh, right up here. Amazing. <laughs> He's completely out, out there. But, I mean, I mean, 
I haven't watched all Friends. I can't make a full judgment, but at the same time, I feel like right. it is it is very white humor. It's not so much like outlandish humor. How many times do they introduce somebody who's not white in that show? A few times. Yeah, once um, or twice. <laughs> so, I mean, no. But I mean, the same the exact same, exact same thing would be said. He goes to his profile immediately. He's like, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> the, ex the exact same thing can be said about Seinfeld, though. I mean, there's there's really no different in terms of whiteness there. But I mean, it just depends on what you're, what. You're, it just depends, I think, on what on what you're looking for. Because, like you mentioned, the outlandish humor versus like the more grounded humor yeah. in Friends, and I think that one of the reasons that Friends was really successful was that Friends was was sort of grounded, and it was all sort of people that you knew. You knew somebody like this character, or like that character. Whereas, like Seinfeld, has more of an appeal in that it is outlandish and it plays on everyday humor, but in like a more. Uh, now I don't want to use extreme, but I don't know a more played up kind of way. So I, don't know, I, I feel like Seinfeld about. was more my my friend group because hello there was, there there was there there was the the Kramer, you know, there was the Costanza, can't stand you. There was. Um, obviously, I was I was probably the boring friend. I was probably the Jerry, you know. You know, there was probably uh, the Newman out there. You know, we had Stephen Colbridge for a while. You know, he's a fat friend. And... <laughs> Hello, Newman. <laughs> As I love it. I mean, we had a we had we had we had a we had a good. I mean, uh, yeah, I was just was huge. Up. I'm at about seven years of celebrating Festivus. For the rest of us. For the rest of us. <laughs> I, I mean, hate tinsel. It's distracting. He's by the can't stand you of the group. Get enough set. Yeah, nobody, know, nobody knows our inside jokes and people. <laughs> my parents. That was my pickup line. I don't have a job. I live with my parents. Virgin till 21. <laughs> Young. Well, Sean, Sean's almost forty, and he's still a virgin. What's wrong with that? I heard about that movie. Still paying for Sean, the Sean had both of his kids out of immaculate conception. <laughs> and how is Sean almost forty? Last week, I thought we uh, we cemented the fact that Sean and I are the same age. And no, no, Sean, I'm gonna be thirty-five this year, buddy. So no, Sean will be forty this year. Yeah, I, you were lying last week. You lying sack of shit. Man. I lie every week. Wow. <sighs> well, except except for the fact that I hate everybody, because that is true. I do hate everybody. Uh, wait, Jim, well, he's usually lying life. face down, getting butt fucked by the smelly guy at his <laughs> store. Lying in oh, a ditch uh, at the side of the road. Exactly. Thank you. That's where I normally. Uh, sidebar: I'm I'm visiting on Thursday night. I fly in, and so Friday and Saturday and Sunday I am open. So viewers, if you want to catch up. Yeah, Tim, we're going out drinking, buddy. That's what she uh, said. We're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have a few. I, I feel like we should, we should at least collaborate and go somewhere special. I think that'd be a great idea. I think hey, we have to go to Rickyville. Sunday brunch I hit up last week. Uh, it was 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. All you can drink mimosas in a buffet downtown. Where? Fuck uh, yeah, Duffy's. Where? Duffy's downtown. I would definitely go to, up to that. Fuck zombies, dude. <laughs> See, so I told I you, Tom hates boy. everything. Tom, Tom hates everything. Tom, Tom becomes really drunk and pessimistic real quick. I'm just nothing. <laughs> it's kind of a place that just like will like bring in a great offer and just slap it. Just you know what? We're too it was good. pretty good. I, I experienced it last weekend. Twenty dollars. Twenty. All you bucks can drink. All you can eat. Five hours. <laughs> Fuck! I'll do that. That's a great one. All right, we need a new topic. Who's got a topic? Oh. What? Uh, were you going to say something? Uh, Gilbert Git. It's a new topic. It's Did you just call Gilman Gilbert? No, it's Gilbert. What about. I didn't keep it's track. Best. Gilbert uh, is, is a city in Arizona. Actually, yes. Gilbert is a Sunshine does kung fu moves. Kid, kids in public. Kids in public. Okay, who wants to start that topic off? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think mo uh, well, at least three of us have kids. 
And I mean, I deal with little bastard degenerates every single day in public. So, I used to work at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh my oh, God! You probably got stories coming out your ass for tell Chuck E. Cheese. A, tell us about Chuck E. Cheese. Exactly. What well, we we shouldn't really call it Chuck E. Cheese. We should call it something else, right? Mm. Fuck Chuck me, please. D's. Yeah, yeah, fuck me, please. Fuck Double me, please. D's. Double, Double D's. D's. Yeah, I like that. All right, Tim is celebrating. You finally finished, but tell us more about Funky D. No, Double D's. Funky uh, D's. When I, Show when, me I first, your D. when I first started, my buddy is like, if you're ever in the mouse costume and a kid starts punching you, you, you grab his wrist and you ask like you're, act like you're dancing with him and twist his wrist so he stops. <laughs> <laughs> like my, first, my first week of work. That's great. That I so have to smile. It's a, that's the only, I only had to do that once. I worked there for, I don't know, like a year. I only had to do that one time. And that kid started crying, and the mom looked at me like as the kid was crying, and I just went like, "I don't know." <laughs> I'm a, I have a smile on my Kids. face the whole time. I'm and just, I'm just the broken. mom. And I then Don, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's you know, awful. after working there for a while, once you see a kid sprint around the corner in socks and just fall over, you can't help but laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Cold-hearted son of a bitch. After you twist his wrist and throat punch him, fuck. <laughs> How could you hurt a child? <laughs> Has anyone else had to wear embarrassing outfits at uh, at their employers? Um, not it's called the job. It wasn't a uniform. It was on. It was a thong. And it was voluntarily. Tom was a stripper. And it was last week. And, and it wasn't actually, a job. Still employed there. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Tuesday nights. Uh, Go working at Touch Me Timmy's. I uh, I worked briefly for a restaurant, Famous Dave's, and I had to wear a pig outfit occasionally and walk around the restaurant and entertain kids. So I would just fucking break dance. That was basically all I did. A and, pig and, outfit. And, That's yeah. great for Famous Dave's too. You know. I just just, air hook, just thrust everything. Oh man, Sad, I, Mr. Biggie. Um, already okay. on the counter. I was gonna find a pic of me with uh, one of our buddies from uh, the grand opening with me grabbing his crotch. Yeah, look for it. Look for it. But anyways, the kids in public thing. Mike's the, the my experience recently was just over the weekend. Uh, I went with Latuzek and our our brood of uh, family and children, a small portion of them. Uh, to a local park, and so there was a, a bunch of kids running around, and there was these two, I don't know, my son's two years old, so he's a little guy, and uh, he's little? Th there was a couple of set, you was know, that when you were on the little bridge there at the second park, and you told that kid to chill out? It was at the, was it, yeah, it was at the second park, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I saw that, I didn't know, I know who you were talking to, but I was like, yeah, bravo, man, there's fucking kids. Yeah, yeah, anyway, so I come in there, and like, there's these these little kids running around, and I don't know, they're seven or eight years old, and they're fucking, of course, you know, they're just just being seven or eight-year-olds. And they're picking up, like, the gravel or the wood chips or whatever, and they're fucking hurling it at each other. But they're not doing it at, like, close range. They're doing it, like, you know, with 15, 20 feet apart, and it's just, it's like scatter shot. It's all over the place. So, like, my son Brad is, like, climbing across this bridge, and this this girl fucking whips a handful of shit at her, her, her little girlfriend up in the tower. Nothing hit Brad. But I just did like. I always, uh, for me, th this is the reason that the, the topic was interesting in my mind, and what I wanted to ask you guys too is how you handle situations like this. Because I, I've got a couple of routes to go. I can be an outland. <laughs> wait, wait, so looks, looks like a John's hot. picture. So fucking hot. <laughs> There's Sean feeling up a crayon. Oh, that's too funny. Hey, you got to stroke your rod somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, though. Um, You've got a couple of options. You can, you can fucking say something to the kid or not. And uh, usually, I'm the type of person where I'm kind of a pacifist. That way, I'll just move on and take my kid somewhere else. But these kids are pissing me off. So all I did was like, "What the hell are you waving there, Sean? Are you done?" I'm done. So Sean's what third place? Yeah, I'm third place. Jeez, man, I'm. Uh, I've fourth. still got quite a. Yeah, quite I think fourth order. because I finished a while ago. Man. Oh, you did. I, thank God because I have to piss like a fucking racehorse. Uh, I told you guys I'd be last or next to last. I still haven't pissed tonight. Another sixteen ounces of beer. Oh, I don't have to piss yet, then. Jeez, I really do. Anyways, so all I said to the all I said to the kid was, 
was uh, I did one of these. I was like, "Hey, watch it. There's other kids around. Watch, watch what you're throwing." Yeah, that's what it was. Whoa, I buddy! The exact wording. And to like uh, a seven year old, that's like you, you just fucking shot him, you know? So like they they fucking ran off to the other side of the playground. They didn't look at me again. But uh, I don't know. I, it just made me wonder, like, how do you guys handle situations like that? Well, you know, the funny part is, is that it's uh, you know, my kids are twelve, six, and uh, fifteen months old. So I, you know, I, I have uh, uh, I have a range of different ages that I have to deal with. And I remember a particular time I was up at the Sonic, uh, the, the the drive, you know, drive-in place or whatever, um, about a year ago. And Jimmy, uh, my oldest, the twelve-year-old, who was I guess probably about eleven then. He went, you know, went off uh, to the bathroom or whatever, and on his way back, there was a couple of kids, one of them had a skateboard, one of them had a bike that were, I guess, harassing him, making fun of him or whatever. So he gets back over by us and, uh, you know, me and my wife and, and the other kids, and um, you know, he doesn't really want to say anything about it or whatever, but I see these kids have, have given him some shit, you know, and automatically, you know, the, I don't know, maybe 12, 13 years old, and I start walking towards him, you know. And I'm loud, and I'm yelling, and it's outdoors, it's summer, you know. And I and I come up to him, I say, "The fuck do you think you are?" You know that sort of thing. And the one kid, you know, he's on his bike, and says, "You can't talk to us like that." And I said, "I can talk to you whatever the fuck I want," you know. And uh, at any rate, it wound up working out okay because nobody wanted to call the police on me, but they probably should have because <laughs> of some of the things that I said to these kids, you know. I mean, I, I pretty much threatened them, and, um, you know, I, I did it in a nice, tasteful way, but, but ultimately I, I did. I, I threatened them, and, uh, and they wound up leaving, you know, and but that's probably not the, the proper way to handle that sort of thing. There's probably got to be a better way for that, you know, but then, and that's, you know, that's on, on the one end of the spectrum, but then when you get on the other end of the spectrum, you know, with, with like the six-year-old and, and, and the, the one-year-old that's kind of just toddling around at the park running into everything, you know, that I find you got to handle with, you know, with kid gloves, you know, you really got to try to be like, oh, okay, come on, little buddy, you know, and, and you got to just try to move your kid along or be polite and, and politely tell the parent your kid's a fucking douche, you know, and, um, <laughs> which sometimes you have to do, you know what I mean? Sometimes you have to just be like, you know, your, your, your kid's a fucking retard, you know what I mean? It's like he's hitting this, he's hitting my kid with a baseball bat, you know, a plastic bat in the face, you know, this needs to stop. And, you know, at the, whether it's at the Chuck E. Cheese at the park, you whatever the thing is, but I've encountered all kinds, and I haven't really found a comfortable way ever to deal with it. You know what I mean? There's no way that makes me feel good about it at the end of it. You know Story I mean? time. So, all right, nice. <laughs> you, you brought up you brought up uh, Chuck E. Cheese, and I know Gilman brought up earlier. Is probably about three years ago. Uh, I brought uh, my two children to Chuck E. Cheese at the time would be probably uh, ten and six. And mm -hmm. we're at Chuck E. Cheese, and you know the you know the kids run around. I kind of sit there and Sorry. eat the fucking cardboard pizza, drink some beer, have a good time. You do have beer there? Well, yeah, and you know what? And you know what? They my uncle beer. Stan and Aunt Judy wound up telling me they're like, and they only allow you two beers an hour. They do. They yeah. only allow you two beers an hour. They only allow two beers now. And my uncle it, Stan was mentioning that. He's like, what the hell, man? He's like, why the hell they only let you have two beers an hour? You well, this this, this is this story will probably explain it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm at a Chuck E. Cheese, and my son comes up to me, and he's playing Super Mario Kart at the game, and he's like, Dad, he's like, what? No. Oh, he's like, Dad, um, this lady just pulled me off the thing so her kid can play. So I'm like, well, show me where oh, she is. Oh, fuck. Yeah, well, I'm a dick, and anyone who really knows me, which would probably be the only one who would be surfed up, is uh, I, I go up, and I'm like, did you just fucking touch my kid? And she's like, oh, no. And uh, so, it, you know, it kind of gets kind of a heated thing. I'm like, you know, if you, if you have an issue, if my kid's playing a game too long and you want someone else, she's like, well, I'm just a teacher, and this kid is, uh, you know, mentally challenged, and he wanted to play the game. And then some dude, some guy comes up, some Hispanic guy, and it has nothing to do with him being Hispanic. It's just the fact he was Hispanic. Gets in my face, and I, and, you know, we're like, about half a second from going to blows because uh, I'm like, you know, my whole fact is if you have a problem with my kid, you know, come talk to me. Is nobody going to fucking lay their goddamn hands on my child without me knowing? 
And, I mean, it was like a half second from going to blows. I was going to be that fucking person on ABC7 News that just beat the shit out of a Hispanic <laughs> because he touched my man fucking chops. Man the hell out of ethnic man in Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and it would it, it would have been a fucking racist thing because, I mean, I, was, hate crime. I mean, seriously, we were, we were nose to nose, and he's like, this is my son's teacher and blah, blah, blah. My son is, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry about your son. And, you know, that's not the fact. The fact is when some cunt see you next Tuesday, um, you know, touches my child, there's going to be a fucking problem. And uh, seriously, I mean, I swear to God, I did think that you'd see me on, like, America's Most Wanted for whipping a candy ass of some fucking uh, Hispanic who was sticking up for his uh, son's teacher. But, um, and I mean, it really doesn't, it doesn't have to do with alcohol. I mean, was I drinking at the time? Yeah. Was I feeling more like <laughs> Superman? Of course I was feeling more like Superman. I may have got my ass whipped. You know, all of a sudden there's a picture of my son standing over me with tears and me with blood just gushing out of my fucking <laughs> skull because I tried to be Superman. But uh, the fact is that there's nobody going to fucking touch my kid. Oh, totally. Well, yeah. when it comes to stuff like that, that's I feel like it's totally reactionary. Like that type of stuff I have no problem reacting to because it's, you know, to, to me it's just it's a natural reaction. I think like, in those situations where, like, we were talking about where you're required to be more diplomatic because it's more of a, I don't know, what do you say, like a civil matter? It's hard, like, uh, and there's the opposite end of the spectrum too, like, uh, like um, Yellow Bus and Tom and Gilman, um, who don't have kids, might be able to sympathize with shit like kids crying at the movie theater and stuff like that. Um, like no. dealing, dealing no, with shit. I, I, I have kids, and that shit's annoying. I, I, mean, I don't you know, like seriously, when they bring so up R-rated movies at like 10 p.m. and they do that shit. I don't get why they bring them to like they they bring them to like Sunday at like seven p.m. Hey, when there's like sixteen year old kids at R rated movies at ten p.m. and they're all sitting there fucking giggling and shit. Yeah, yeah, giggling and texting and shit like that. Yeah, that that stuff drives me nuts. Like, cause I I just I don't know if it's that I have ADD or what, but I cannot focus on the movie when there's people in close proximity that are just talking and just being rambunctious and fucking annoying overall when I'm trying to watch a movie. That used to just ruin my movie experience, you know? And I try to not be that person at the movies. So, you know, for instance, our 15-month-old, he was great up until about three months ago when he started walking. Um, you know, he would just, we'd take him to the movies, he'd either sleep through the movie or he, my wife breastfeeds and, and he would eat a little bit, fall asleep, he'd be good, you know? Now he wants to get up, he wants to walk around, he's walking, he's talking, everything else, and ultimately we just don't bring him anymore because he's, he's a problem, you know, and I don't yeah. want to ruin other people's experience that have paid their good money to go see a movie. I don't care if it's on a Sunday afternoon or, or a Friday night at 10 o'clock, you know. <laughs> As someone without kids, I'd say I think it's respectful to bring your kid out of the theater if they start crying, personally. Yeah, it's a thing. Well, it, it really is. I mean, it is. I mean, the fact is, you know, you, anyone who's normal would think that, you know, if I'm sitting here and I'm a single guy, I'm on a date with somebody, I don't want some fucking kid screaming in my fucking ear behind me, two rows ahead of me. I don't want to hear fucking cell phones ringing. I don't want to hear people talking. I mean, I spent my money, and the fact is, if you have an issue, grab your shit and go. You know? I mean, it is what it is. Everybody has issues. I mean, I understand that, but, I mean, if I'm spending my money, I don't want someone behind me on the phone saying, yeah, you know, this movie is fucking tits, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, seriously. Abs no, absolutely. I agree. 100%. Oh, okay. When it comes to, like, okay, for example, I saw The Croods. I understand that is straight up a family movie. I understand there's going to be kids doing stupid shit. I understand there's going to be newborns doing stupid shit. When we go and see another movie that is completely PG-13, fucking rated R... There's no reason why we should be seeing a baby crying, even if it's Sunday afternoon. Like, come on, why, why are we bringing babies out there? All right, for example, um, I saw the Croods. I think I saw. I, I think it was like I think it was like Jurassic Park, like 3D. I went and saw that, and I was like, okay, it's a. You know, it's an old movie, it's 3D, you know, we bring the family, it's all cool, but, like, there was a goddamn newborn, like, a fucking, like, two or three-year-old, like, one or two, like, crying. Yeah, that's ridiculous. The entire time, I'm just sitting there, like, alright, there are advanced things going on in this movie, 
Telephone <laughs> babysitter. I understand you don't got no Obama phone. Get your shit together. Fucking throw it at your goddamn grandma. Get that shit carried and go do your thing. Like my whole thing is for like you know new new parents or even whatever experienced parents. Like you got to get out and go to the movies. And my whole thing is like. If you want to take a newborn in the movie, sit in the fucking back row, stand in the in the back aisle. As soon as they start crying, you fucking leave. Period. You know because uh, I think that you should still have the right to get out. Not everyone has access to childcare, and that's fine. But be respectful of other people. Like I totally, I totally think it's inappropriate when people are just. And the other thing too is is that it goes in the same vein of thought when you're at the park, when you're at muted uh, watching their kids you're like <laughs> are you fucking kidding me like you were talking about Jim like your kid is hitting my kid with a baseball bat like you it's totally unacceptable but uh, so many people just sit around just let their kids run around I don't I don't understand that whatsoever let's be clear it's it's um is there a bleep can I can I bleep this out when I say it don't bleep shit out there's no Who, need to bleep anything gives a out. fuck dude just say whatever it's the negligent, ignorant people, and I have to say this right now, it is probably 40% minorities. And it's 60% dumb white people that make it bad for white people. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's true. I mean, 40% minorities. I mean, I'm not going to... I blame 60% white people that should know better because they've been here for a while. I'm not going to disagree with Tim. It's the fact is that, you know, it's, it's, it's total fucking ignorance, man. I mean, you know, I understand when you're... You know, you have a newborn. You still want to kind of live the life. You know, you want to go out. You want to have fun. But guess what? When you're a fucking child, life stops. Okay? All of a sudden, you're responsible for yourself. Now you're responsible for another individual. I wouldn't and, say life stops, but just well, no. it changes. Well, yeah. It, cha it, well, <laughs> no, it, it fucking stops. stops. You're fucked. <laughs> it fucking stops. Stop. No, you know, it changes drastically because you do. You have another life you need to think of. And you know what? You want to go see fucking uh, the, the new fucking R-rated movie? Seriously, don't. Because you know what? A fucking baby is going to fucking cry during a movie and you're going to piss someone off. You might as well fucking sit in the front row and have your fucking cell phone on blast and be fucking single and let it fucking go. You're just going to piss as many people off. You know, I mean, movies aren't fucking a dollar twenty-five. Like you go see a matinee years ago, you're fucking still paying six, uh, nine bucks for a fucking 3D movie. It's it's asinine. I have um, correction. When you're on the West Coast, Arizona is seven twenty five for a matinee, and California is goddamn nine twenty five for a goddamn matinee. You're you're paying mad money for any kind of movie. If you, you just know, had a kid, if you just had a kid. And want to go see a movie? Stay home because you're just gonna try to get laid and have another baby, and ain't worth it. <laughs> Done. Rack 'em. Rack 'em. Rack 'em. All right. Rack bar. Yo, how you doing on your forty? Yeah, forty check. 40. Uh, I've got. No, I don't know, I, like I've got I'm a third of the three. Thir a third of the second one done. I have a third of the third one done. No shit, dude. I'm fucking... You see? I'm just not that much of a drinker. Jim. What's up? How much you got? Huh? Jim's um, done. Yeah, I, I finished my second one like a half hour ago. He's done. And uh, I didn't buy any more, unfortunately. So, <laughs> no. But next time, though, I think I'll buy three or four. No, we, we probably will never do this part again. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Or we're gonna move on to something <laughs> crazier. Be like, oh, let's, let's. It was by like drinking the rest of his beer raider. Nice beer. Now. <laughs> my yeah. uh, my buddy Chad is still on it. He was uh, to the topic we were talking about with the kids, you know, and uh, and he, he's not married, doesn't have kids, but he goes chloroform and a rag will take care of the kid crying issue. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Dude. Or like I like to say is, you just grab the kid, shake them till their eyes roll behind their head. They'll sleep for days. <laughs> days. That's a good solution. Yeah, I'm not sure. How Honestly, do those. not ever do that to your child. Yeah. I do not want to be held accountable for people killing their children. Just because. so let me ask you this: for for Latuzek and Shank, the other parents here, what do you do when you're in public and you tell your kid no for something and they do a fucking they do a, a level ten fucking shit? Yes. What do you do? Go ahead. 
Uh, you usually, that usually we wind up having a, a public display of I'm bigger than you. Um, you know, which is basically just like, all right, you want to, you want to try to call me out? I'm going to embarrass you now. I mean, I have literally taken, you know, and, and put, put one over my arm and, and pulled pants down and whacked their ass, man, right in public in front of people, everything else, you know? So, or if they try to get loud with me, I get louder, you know? And, um, you know, I mean, it doesn't always work out great, but, uh, you know, I'd say about nine out of ten times I win. So, yeah, it's pretty good odds. You know, I mean, my, fact, my, my, my fact is, uh, you know, I got a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old, and, you know, 13-year-old to the point now that, uh, you know, it's not really an issue with him, but my daughter is always, you know, everywhere we go, she, she wants something. She always wants something, wants something, wants something. You know, regardless if it's a fucking uh, a piece of gum or a fucking uh, $300 you know anything? <laughs> it's, I mean, seriously, it's just we're, I can't go anywhere without her wanting something. You know, it's like I have a fucking girlfriend who's thirteen years or who's ten years old, and it's fucking ridiculous. And it's just you know, my point is, you know, my ex-wife has a a tendency to say yes, and I say no. But it's weird because when we were married, it was exactly opposite. I'd say yes, she'd say no, she'd say no. So uh, it's a you know big turnaround of uh, you know things, and uh, it's just honestly, it's. It's just about, you know, basically like Jim says, is, uh, you know, laying down a law and, you know, letting them know that the shit ain't going to happen. And, you know, like my daughter, she'll get pissed at me and won't talk to me for three hours. God damn it, it's the greatest three hours of my life because she ain't fucking telling me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> Smartest fucking 10-year-old in the world in her own eyes. The funny thing about your 10-year-old is she's like an exact, well, in my in my take at least, she's like an exact replica of your ex-wife. So she's like constantly nagging you and shit. It's just kind of well, funny to watch. I mean, to that point, she is. But when it comes to her fucking attitude, it's like fucking looking at me. It's like, like my son's a lot more sensitive, and my daughter's like, just doesn't give a fuck and hates everything. <laughs> and it's like, like I, if she like, I hate you. And if I say I hate you, we'll go back for like, th yeah. we can go back and forth with that for like three days, and we'll still hate each other. And it's like, it's like <laughs> she gets like she looks more like my wife, but she's got my fucking temperament, my attitude. And she can't get along with her her stepdad. Uh, she'll just she'll put her foot down, and you know, like basically in her mind, he's an asshole. And so five uh, more years. It's totally. It's like it's like me. It's like my son, like comically and mentally, is like where I am, and my daughter is just like awesome. Uh, off, yeah. Or I like to say it, shawsome. Yes. Shawsome. Yes. She is. She's like she's like a little me to a certain extent. Uh, you know, who is just in a female version. And my wife, my ex-wife, is going to have major, major problems because if we couldn't get along, she's not going to get along with her when she turns into a teenager. I guarantee it. See, my my whole thing. I mean, and it, it, it's it's totally subjective because. Because it's it's all based on uh, relativity. Like you know, with my son being two right now, when he goes into crisis lockdown mode, for me, it's it really depends on the situation. Like if it's something that's important, yeah, like he's he's not going to get his way. If it's if it's something that's minor, but it's going to save him from fucking going to level eleven, and we're at a restaurant half hour before we even get our food, you know, hey, I might think twice about it. But, uh, but yeah, yeah I, I'm not much of a I'm not much for like I'm not a huge disciplinarian. Um, I, I shouldn't say that. It, I, there's structure and guidelines for my child, but I want him to understand how subjective everything is. So it's it's important to me that he knows that there's always choice, and that hey, Question. if you're not getting your way about something, that oh, okay, that's your choice, but Question. this is what the outcome is going to be. So I, I I tend to explain things a lot to Brad. You know, I, I don't like to I don't like to make a big scene. I don't like to. Uh, embarrass them, like that kind of thing. Like to me, I just you know that's not my approach. But uh, but yeah, so it's it's interesting because it's always a crapshoot. Sometimes you know it works out, and other times it's you know he's he's got to he's got to work it out, and he's gonna you know end up sitting in the car. You know, and I think personally now having three of them and having them spaced out like I do, you know, for for the most part, you have to treat each situation differently. Because there's many times that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll discuss this with my wife. I'll say, you know what, just it's fine. It's it's inconsequential. Just let him win for this one. 
he'll be better at this restaurant we're at or whatever. Just let him have this one. You know, it doesn't affect us in any way, shape, or form. And then there's other times where you know you, you do kind of have to uh, have to treat it differently just because of the way they're acting or, or what one of the older ones is showing the younger one and that sort of thing. And you know, and and I feel that you know sometimes you have to make sure that you know one of them knows that when you have multiple kids, you know, that one of the older ones uh, does not set a bad example that the younger ones see and then you know follow suit with you know with throwing a fit or whatever and saying that hey he got his way so now I'll do. Then, you know. <laughs> yeah, having a bunch of kids has got to so. change the dynamic a lot. That's why I say, like, my experience is pure, obviously purely subjective, and it's just well to the kids I have. Tangent. What? Sidebar. Don't do it. Tangent it up. Hey. We're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and do a tangent. Uh, Jim, when when you only have probably one kid, uh, the Bubba. Yes. Um, we had a story where. Um, I, mean, I think me and Joe stole a bunch of flags, and then we came home that night, and then a dog bit my balls, and you made fun of me, and it was kind of funny. I was just thinking about it right now. I'm like, all right, talking about kids. I was a kid back then, and I just remember like you were like almost like a full grown like somewhat teenager. <laughs> and you remember, like full grown, somewhat teenager. Is totally tame, and somehow he decided that he awesome. wanted to bite me, and I, he did bite me. There was no blood drawn, but I just remember you were like, you know, this shit. You know, like, he bit you, like he bit you in the dick, like big deal, like get over. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to like play down the ball, but it's, it's funny the like, things that, that people right. remember. Remember though, like, I just remember like that is the parenting that you probably give your kids. He's team. like, no. he's like, get used to it. <laughs> you're gonna get bit in the dick a lot in your life, so just get used to it and just shake it off and move on. It uh, happened a lot in college. It got weird. And you know, and the funny part is, and and, and, Bill and I have <laughs> talked about this. You know, there's certain things that uh, that are memorable to, to some based on the age that you're at or whatever the case was, and and I, I honestly don't remember that particular that particular instance, you know, and if it involved uh, stealing flags, I, I know that was something that, uh, that, that I, I did for a short period of time, too, because it, it seemed fun and interesting um, until we tried to steal a Confederate flag. Um, it's and it said the South will rise again uh, it, <laughs> below it, and it was in Long Grove, and we actually got shot at. And uh, that was the last flag that I ever stole. Like I swear to God, like I, I took the flag, I dove into the back of the car, and and I mean, the, you know, the floodlights had went on and everything, the motion lights, and we actually got shot at. And uh, so that that my career ended at that point. But um, you know, but it is funny though the things that that you know are memorable to some, and and other people just you know they take for granted and they forget about you know, and it's not to trivialize what. You're you were saying it all, but I honestly don't that, remember. But I honestly don't remember that, you know. <laughs> so until you know, I think you remember that as vividly as I did, because I, I feel like as a little bitch kid as I was, I was probably like eleven, you know. I was hanging out with Joe, and, and Joe was like, "Oh man, he bit you in the dick," and I was like, "I think blood came from it." And then, like, happened, like, kind of like a weird job on it, and then like nothing really happened. My penis I, is just a bloody mass. I don't know what's going. I, like it's funny because <laughs> I remember the dick biting and the the flag stealing as separate events. I didn't realize that was like a continuum. There was a week apart. I want to say that there's probably at least a week apart because I mean, uh, Joe, we stole like sixty flags. No, no, we stole we stole double that. We stole like 120, 140 flags. It was crazy. Uh, well, each, I, do you remember that each driveway had two flags? It was for the Fourth of July. We were it, was, it was for uh, it was for Jenna or was it Jennifer? I don't I don't even know. I just remember you, Tim was spending the night at my house, and we decided we had this brilliant idea. We had no concept of like curfew that like there would be police out like to to check on you, and so we just snuck out of the house. I don't know midnight, whatever, and uh, I was like, you know, it's funny what inspired us to steal flags was Latuzek, was Jim, because I was like, dude, my brother told me all these stories about these flags he stole, and we should go steal some flags. We stole a flag from Palatine High School, right, out of, the, that's right, out, of the, right out of the front of the place, man. We, we pulled up to the, and they got a floodlight right on that fucker, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and we pulled up to it, man, and I jumped out of that hatchback, and I, and I had, uh, so we go up to the flag, and it's a thick, uh, it, it's tied on there, you know, and they got a pretty good knot that I couldn't figure out how to, how to untie. Uh, so somebody had a pocket knife on him, you know, and I want to, I had to 
saw through that fucker. And I mean, we were there for, it seemed like an eternity. It was probably only a couple of minutes. But when that thing dropped on us, that thing's like 20 by like 14 feet. You know, it's big. I mean, you can't put it up in a room and, and, and display it, you know. But uh, we were in the police blotter the next day, so that was an accomplishment, I guess. Yeah, there you but, go. Uh, I just remember anyway, that night when we were... No, 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 I was just going to say, I just remember that night when we were stealing all the 4th of July flags, and, um, like, I don't know, it was daylight by this time, but but uh, Yellow Bus and I were like, hey, we, we, we should probably, you know, get heading home, and we just had this great idea to start... The papers had been delivered, so we were like, let's, let's take the papers and fucking, th- you know put them in different people's lawns and shit. And so somebody had, like, a stack of newspapers delivered to them, like in a bundle, a, a big plastic bag. And I just remember, like, Tim grabbing the bag and just spinning around in 360s and just fucking letting it go. And I'm like, oh, it's going to land on a lawn. It hit someone's, like, front window, like, really fucking hard. It didn't break oh. anything, but it was just, like, a, a shower of papers, and that's when we took off running home. But anyways, we've we've got, like... Hundreds of flags, and we're like, I'm like, dude, we gotta, we gotta hide these so my parents don't see them. And he's like, let's put them in your garage on your drum set. So we just like, we put them all around the drum set. And do you remember that, Tim? Uh, yes. We put them all around the drum set, and the next day, my mom comes out and she's like, "What are all these flags doing in the garage on your drum set? There's like hundreds of them." <laughs> like. Yeah, we got them from friends. <laughs> I didn't know what to tell her, but I never got in trouble for it. Oh, no. They used to ask me the same thing because whenever we would steal flags, I'd always put them in the garage, you know. And, uh, you know, Dad came outside once and went to do something. And he was like, what the fuck are all these flags doing out there? Like, seriously, why do you have a Confederate flag, Jimmy? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, some of them I hung up in my room, you know. But I mean, flags. People don't realize they're you know full size ones. Are they're a decent size? They're like three by five foot, you know. So uh, I don't know. We you know we had taken a, a few dozen of them, and um, you know over the the weeks when we were bored, and uh, just they wound up accumulating in the garage, you know. So <laughs> yeah, the fun shit that you do as kids. I I uh, I remember right around that time is when I actually had started. Um, <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but I had started uh, taking cigarettes from mom and dad and smoking cigarettes out of my room. That's how I started. And uh, <laughs> and and Tim Tim was there for that too. I remember the first like cigarette I lit up. I didn't know that you're supposed to puff it, so like I sat there with like the long grill lighter, just like lighting the cigarette and holding it there okay. until it took fucking forever to start. And then Tim went and hid in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> What did you say? You were like, I don't, I don't want my mom to. I don't want to my mom to hear and smell that. <laughs> so then, like after I smoked the cigarette, I'm like, Tim, smell my face. Does it smell like smoke? And so Tim's like, smell my face. He's like, Yeah, bro, it smells like smoke. So I take speed stick, like fucking gel deodorant, and just coat my face. <laughs> I just remember my my mom being like, What? You you smell different. What is going on? There's just fucking deodorant all over my face. I had a rash. That was really awkward. I did not feel comfortable the entire time. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> and Gilman's just sitting here like, he's like, I'm going to mute and just fucking laugh my ass off. And Sean won't even put his video up because he's probably laughing so goddamn hard right now. Yeah, Shank is fucking, he's, he's yeah, shanking. Yeah, he went to take a piss and then he's uh, he's giving himself a little, little Shank revision there. <laughs> I feel like every, every week Sean masturbating comes up as like a brief topic. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure Sean is really excited and just gets all giddy and just happens. You know? Well, you know, it's it's funny because earlier today <laughs> we, after we got done working out, my wife and I, uh, Carrie, we were, we were driving around and we stopped over at Jewel to pick up some stuff and uh, a few things for the house that, that we needed food wise. And uh, I was going to grab 40s; they didn't have them there. Anyway, and then we're going to pull into the, and we're talking about the whole 40s and how it's bullshit. They don't have them there. And she's like, are you going to drink them? And I was like, yeah, sure, you know, I'll drink them. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not too excited about it, only because I haven't been drinking much lately. And we've been working out and stuff. I said, so, you know, I, I just don't want to be all fucked up and just be a complete ass, um, you know, as opposed to the normal ass that, that I'm that I'm usually <laughs> at. And uh, so, anyway, so we're pulling into the liquor store parking lot. And I told her, I said, you know, it, and it's not like, you know, I can just go wherever I want. I'm in the basement at my house, and we have this fourth room that's about the size of a prison cell. It has no windows. Uh-huh. My father's been staying with us since uh, November and December, and he sleeps with this respirator, Darth Vader-like mask on for oxygen because of his emphysema and his uh, unwillingness to quit smoking for 52 years. And 
I, you know, so I, when I have to go to the bathroom or leave or whatever, it's it's an ordeal, man. I gotta be quiet and sneak around my own house to go up to the main floor to take a piss, <laughs> you know. So it, it, it's a big deal. And then I compared it to Sean. I said it's not like I'm living by myself, you know. I got my own house where I could just walk 20 feet away, take a piss, jerk off, you know. <laughs> so you need a piss bottle, man. That's what yeah. they have when you go on tour. When you're in the van all the time, you just Did piss you in the just, bottle. During two forties, you got two piss bottles. Yeah, the funny, exactly. The funny part is, is that you know downstairs here we have a laundry little laundry room area, and it has a utility sink. And I, to I, I totally think that about three weeks ago when we were on, I think that I, I stepped out and I caught my dad pissing in the utility sink. Now, I, I can't be sure, but I, I'm pr I'm ninety percent. You know what I mean? Because I was like, I kind of opened up the door and I was like, Dad, what the hell are you doing? You know, anytime you like, you know, see or hear him. I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary. Oh, thing. we got you. And he just kind of like peeked back, you know, from leaning into the room where the piss sink was, and he was just kind of like, "Oh, I, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just, uh, just going to sleep here." <laughs> I, I bet was he like, was pissing. Yeah, no doubt he, about he it. He totally was because he didn't want you know, to get out of breath walking up the stairs. He didn't want to walk up the 14 stairs to go take a piss or whatever. But I was just thinking, how do I approach that subject? Like, you're living in my house for free. Yeah. And, like, that's fine, but, like, you can't piss in my utility sink. Like, no. that's only cool if I do that or if I give you permission to do that, okay? Like, you cannot just piss in my sink, like, you know, because you're too lazy and out of breath to go upstairs. At least he's not taking a dump in it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I, on the brighter side of things, uh, I, I do, yeah, that's that's good. I, you know, I, I'm going to look at I'm going to look at it like that. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm lax about that kind of stuff because I know I would fucking do it, so I'm like, hey, you know, go Well, that's it. the funny part because I come over by your place and you're like, yeah, go ahead. If you got to go, just piss in the sink, you know, and it's like I follow all the proper etiquette, you know. It's like I, you know, I run some hot water while I'm pissing. I have a very good aim, you know what I mean? It goes right down. Well, yeah, you know, I run the hot water to wash it down, you know, and get rid of the smell, you know. You, you think that all those things will help to purify it, uh, the area. And <laughs> but I don't think he was doing any of those things, you know. And I kind of just want to be like, dude, don't piss in my sink. But again, it's one of those tough subjects to broach. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, you stay. Hey, you know, same type of thing. Don't like, piss in my sink. You know? Next time you're gonna pee in the sink, turn the damn hot water on. Come on. Yeah, it's like, listen, brother. You know, spray a little soap down there. You know, uh, a little hot water action going. Maybe spray a little Febreze afterwards. You I remember fun. describing to Tom over Christmas break when he came home. I was like, you can piss in the left side of the sink, but not the right, because that's where we do dishes. And. Uh, <laughs> And he was like, I don't know, it was like a couple hours later. And I, I, I said something, complained about the sink, and Tom's like, which one would I take to get in? Because I just took a dump <laughs> and just made me laugh. What the fuck was that? <laughs> um, hey, Sean's right. back. Okay, so, Sean, since you fucking took an extended break, fapping or whatever you were doing oh, over there. I had to get, had to get off real quick. Exactly. You had a 10-minute warning. Hey, Sean, we're done with 40s. <laughs> I'm on number three, bitches. No, you're not. Oh, I, okay, that's it. He's calling you out because he's not flying. I'm, I'm half. I'm halfway on this. On this Wait, one. So we're we'll gonna see. play this game three forties. I got a keg to finish after these two forties. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> when I fly home on Thursday, we're gonna have a Saturday night uh, beer off or something. I don't know. Speaking of beer, I'm gonna go piss. Absolutely, Elfra. So next topic. What is our next topic, Tim? Uh, pass. Next topic is why does <laughs> Joe drink like such a bitch? That that is a little bit vaginal, and uh, I can I can say that as as his older brother, because honestly, you know, I thought why, that I, why I is would there be wine involved. I thought that I would be lacking. You know what I mean? And I was thinking, man, this is going to be terrible. I'm not going to be. Able put down two forties in a reasonable amount of time, and uh, you know, but, but luckily though. Okay, now I'm back. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I'm likely. I'm. I'm very. Um, I would like to veto talking about the Beatles, and we can talk about Joe's addiction to uh, red wine. Well, I think. I think the whole thing about the Beatles is, is it kind of went into. No. Where they have... no, 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 no. 
nothing about the Beatles. It's all about Joe's addiction to Merlot. Justin Bieber. Why Joe is like Joe like why is so, bad? so why is Joe so pretentious? I feel like we should uh, intervention uh, right now. There's there should be an intervention. Anyone well, got God sign? damn, we should have intervention with every single one of us because every single one of us is down fucking eighty ounces of fucking beer. Some of us more. Oh, going. half that wasn't beer, my friend. It's malt. Yeah. Malt. Well, no. Let's let's be more practical. Um. <laughs> Why does Joe like Shiraz? Let's <laughs> uh, ask ourselves that. Wait, wait, say that again? Why does Joe like Shiraz? We're having an intervention with you, Joe. It's surprise. It's it's the last ten minutes of our show. It's it's why is wine a priority to you? Why is wine a priority to me? Okay, let me tell you my little <laughs> my little uh, story about wine. So I don't I don't drink that much, but when I do drink, I fall into one of two categories. Like when I first start out drinking again, like what I'm doing tonight, like obviously you can see I'm the biggest lightweight here. Um, but what's weird is my my tolerance grows rapidly. So like if I if I continue drinking in a manner like this, like a few beers a night, within a few days I get to the point where I have to have like seven or eight beers just to start feeling something. So when I'm in those those types of modes where I'm drinking regularly. Um, I used to not like wine at all, but um, I started to sort of intentionally try to develop a palate for it, and it started with like really su sweet wines, like Moscato and shit, and white wines. And now I pr I prefer red wines because it's you know I feel like I've, my taste has progressed in terms of uh, what I enjoy out of, out of wine. And so the reason I like wine is that I can I can get drunk much faster off it if that's my intention. And I can stay hydrated at the same time because it's not like beers where I have to keep slamming them back, and then trying to catch up with water is really hard. So like with my, with wine, it's a win 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 because I can drink a ton of water and stay hydrated. I have no hangover because of it. I can get drunk faster and consume less um, volume, and I feel like there's much more to appreciate over the long term, like uh, the the subtleties in in wine making. So that's what turned me on to wine, and that's why I've, I've been drinking wine a lot lately. But before that, I fucking hated wine. I couldn't stand it. I was all about whiskey and beer. That's all I drank. So, yeah, that's my wine story. But I drink a lot of wine now, so. Now, whiskey and good beer, or just whiskey and, like, Miller Lite? It used to be, like, whiskey and Miller Lite, but then I got on this binge where, like, I really got into different types of beers, namely, like, really dark beers. So, um... I I'm a huge microbrew fan. Yeah, I, lo I love microbrews. I think that it's it's, it's awesome to see like the craftsmanship that goes into it. And I love the different flavor profiles. Have you heard of Dark Lord Day? Of what? Dark Lord Day? No. It's a huge uh, beer fest at Three Floyds. They sell their beer once a year. You can only buy it once a year. It's fifteen dollars a bottle at the event, and then after the event, you got to buy it for at least fifty a bottle. Really? It's, it's coming up next weekend. I'm going to that. No it's shit, awesome. dude. Yeah, I'd like to get more into that type of shit. Like, yeah, I've just been sl slowly kind of learning more about wine. It's really just been like the last year that I've learned about it, and then, um, yeah, that's so that's been my experience with it. But before that, I used to hate. I mean, hate the taste of red wine. But that's like anything. Like they say, I think you need to taste something like nine or ten times before you can actually recognize whether you like it or not. Um, so, I've got a lot of stories like, like that with like like okay, avocados, coleslaw. Um, I don't know. There's probably ten other things that like I did not like for a long time, but it was only because I'd, I'd have it once and then not try it again for a really long time. The reason I got into avocados and I, I never liked guacamole or shit like that is because my wife's, uh, my father-in-law, my dad, um, would make it all the time for my wife, and uh, she uh, she really liked it and always raved about it. And I found that if someone else is really passionate about a type of food, I will re-explore that food with their enthusiasm for it and try to love it the way they do and I find that a lot of times it changes my opinion on it. Like coleslaw, I never liked coleslaw until, um, well two experiences, this local place called Grammy D's where it was really creamy and it's like tasting other coleslaws now in comparison to oh, it, their cream. coleslaw is really like, I have it's never really, it's, it's, you're not, I hate to say this, you're not missing anything but, uh, but uh, it's super creamy there and so it was much more tolerable and palatable but, what got me into it outside of that was actually watching Man vs. Food. 
Adam Richman, like, on several episodes when he's eating, like, fried catfish and shit with coleslaw, and the way he describes it, he's like, the crunch of the coleslaw and the crispy of the fried, and, like, so I started having it that way, like, on barbecued food and shit, like, throwing a scoop of coleslaw on there, and, like, ever pork. since then, like, I yeah, like, a pulled pork with some oh, coleslaw yeah. on it and shit, like, it's fucking, it's incredible, like, it's, but I didn't like it until I approached it with that same enthusiasm for the product, you know what I mean? Have you guys ever had Hearts of Palm? No, I've not. Hearts of Palm, I didn't even know about it until, again, it was another thing my wife introduced me to. She would have it in salads all the time. It, it looks like sticks of string cheese, but the, it's the inside of a palm tree. Um, and it, it ta it's weird. Like I can't describe the consistency. Is it, is it like a fruit or a vegetable? or It's like somewhere it's in between. I, I, think, I think it's considered like a vegetable, but... Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like it's it's like it's it's gelatinous mixed with like an undercooked noodle. Like that's the texture of it. And then the flavor is it it's like vinegar and like white shit. I don't know how to explain it. At first it turned me off like the first half dozen the first like yeah, half dozen times I had it. like six or seven times I didn't like it. And then one day I was like I hadn't tried it for like a year or something and I was like fuck it, I'll I'll try, I'll try it again. And I got into it, you know? So, I don't know, it's weird. Like, if you don't like something, try it a bunch of times over, like, a long range of time, and you might end up liking it. Hey, that's yeah, weird. no, that, that, I mean, that's absolutely true, because I, I didn't like avocado or guacamole for years, for most of my life. And my wife makes a lot of things with guacamole and with avocado, and I, you know, just started to give it a, a try a few years ago, and it's one of my favorite foods now, you know, <laughs> to, to, to have. Great. So. Yeah. For me, it's green olives. I I fucking hated them all my life, and then I still actually one, once I turned twenty one, you got the martinis with the black olives with the jalapeno. That's how I started liking them. It was the black the green olives with the jalapeno inside, and I was like, oh, this is delicious. Um, no shit, I've never fucking. I've had a couple. I've probably had three martinis my whole life. It's get get black. <laughs> The way, the way to start it. The way to start drinking them is to get the if you like spicy food, go with the jalapeno and black or green olive, because then it won't taste as bad. I never first. even knew that was a thing. That's a, yeah, a I never knew that either. I love yeah. spicy food. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then now I can eat. I can eat green olives whenever. I mean, they're delicious. Black olives, I still hate, but green olives, yeah, delicious. You know, you know what I like to do. This is something that just popped in my mind when I was on my sabbatical for about 10 minutes. Is, you know, we have two special guests on. We had special guests on last week. You know, why don't we get to know a little bit about our special guests? That's a good idea. Uh, Sean, what do you have in mind? What do you want to ask Gilman? I mean, just, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I know you know Gilman. I know that uh, L Yellow Bus knows Gilman, but I mean, I don't know how much Latuzek knows Gilman. I mean, I, I you know, before today, I've never. Had an interaction with him, so I mean, tell me a little. I'll about be yourself. honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Gilman's a piece of shit. No, I'm just kidding. I, I haven't. I haven't talked to. Actually, I haven't talked to Matt since high school. Um, and I'm 25 now, so I probably haven't talked to Matt in like seven years. And tonight was the first time. So I wanted. I wanted to ask you, Matt. How did you even uh, hear about the show and shit? Was it just through Facebook or what? Uh, yeah, fa your Facebook last week. I was watch I was playing flash games on one monitor and watching you guys on the other. Huh. So. And you guys are like forty hands next week. I'm like, shit. I want to be on that. I will <laughs> drink. I gotta get it on that. <laughs> I'm gonna win that yeah, motherfucker. I mean, it was very entertaining. Uh, I like the show. Well, it's thanks, funny. man. I think yeah. you're entertaining, Gilman, and I think you should be on here more often. I, I totally agree. I mean, I think but, he brings a, he brings a lot to the table. I mean, I think he's you know, I mean, he he has he knows a lot of the information, and uh, I mean, I think he's been a great addition to the show this week. Sure, you Sean, guys. You, you guys saw my keg. I see how it is. <laughs> Sean, do you want to pull down his pants now and virtually suck his dick? Is that what you're trying to get at? <laughs> Fucking Sean, every time. I think it'd be all right. He just went and rubbed one off. Uh, uh, a few ago. Yeah, I'm good. I mean, but you know what? When, when you get 40, it's like that woman sex drive, man. It's like it just kicks into fucking Mach 10. Flogging the dolphin once just isn't enough, huh? Once, yeah, once every <laughs> ten minutes, it's enough. Hey, t Tim and Tom aren't here. Should we kick them off for fun and see if they if they try and rejoin? 
They're too busy doing prison rape right now. Yes, yeah, so, um, <laughs> they probably won't even notice, man. So you know, they're they're sixty nine and up. And, uh, <laughs> Paul, so. I'm gonna eject him from the hangout and see if he notices. <laughs> Is this second I mean, I just, just kicking I, I mean, in? I, that's what I mean, I personally just think that if we have a guest on, that you know, to kind of a little bit about themselves, so that you know, I mean, we've been doing this for you know, this is week number four now, so I mean, I'm sure people get tired of me talking and me saying fuck every seven and a half seconds. Well, they didn't uh, have to get tired of you. They didn't like you up front well, I mean, from the first word you ever uttered. Yeah, I mean, most, pe- most people do. For the antithesis of the show. Uh, you know? Exactly. <laughs> you know, so, and, and you know, I still, I still hate everybody, and I still hate Boston. Just you know the funny thing is Sean's one of those guys too that like he he is the antithesis but when you get to know him um he's he's a guy who doesn't give a shit but he gives a he gives lots of shits he gives lots of shits I did that was the the break that I took about 10 minutes ago that was lots of shit I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good idea, though, as far as what Sean was saying. Guess. When we do have a, a, a guest yeah. on, I, I think that's a good idea. You know, I have a couple of guests in mind. Uh, one of them, you know, like I said, was a, a former video game programmer. Another one was, uh, uh, you know, he, he currently works now in, uh, in in the industry, you know. And, um, you know, probably would be a good idea to actually introduce them, get to know a little bit about them. All right, well, shit, let's not talk about it. Let's be about it. Okay, so, so Gilman, introduce yourself. Tell us, what do you do? Hey, well, currently I work at a web consulting firm. I do a lot of Java programming um, and web development. Um, and like, I mean, I knew you guys in high school, but we never really hung out. I mean, I've been to a couple of Halo parties with Tim. Ooh. And I've seen uh, Tommy at the bars occasionally in Palatine. But oh, anyway, Joe, good. we never really hung out that much. I mean, we knew each other, but... Yeah, I was, really just saying that to, uh, I was just saying that to, uh, I don't know if it was Sean or Jim or Tim, one of these fucking losers. Uh, no, I was kidding. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we were like kind of acquaintances. I think we had a couple classes together, like maybe Earth Science or something yeah. like that, but that was, uh, I think that was the extent of it. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I knew everybody, so which was crazy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. but yeah, man. Like I was, I was surprised when I had I had heard that you wanted to come on because I was like, people people are watching this aside from like our spouses and girlfriends. Like I was really shocked that people are actually watching yeah. this. But, I, I, uh, I, I would just like to point out though that uh, there is one dislike on the uh, YouTube page. That's probably me. Who is that? I don't know, man. There was a dislike. I can't get to it. I tried to see. Joe, there was two. There was two comments too, but I couldn't get to them either. Tommy, was that you? You said that was the YouTube page. No. Who? Fucking Tommy. Joe has a lazy eye. I love you, Joe. No. Do the lazy eye. Let's see if I can do it in the camera. You ready? Chris is like, I think Joe's left eye looks drunk. I'm like, no, I think he just has a lazy eye. Oh no, I can do it with both. I can do it at least at least with this one. Hold on. No, his left eye looks like it's. Hey Joe, like did you finish your second part towards the camera? Man? No, he has not. I'm on number three, by the way. Three. Do you guys see that shit? I fucking. I know Ryan is like on his like three hundredth, but Sean's dick slapping you. You should just fucking bend you over. Wait, whoa, wait, 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 wait! Radio Sean, silence. Sean, Did you see that shit? Look it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Yo. Regardless of that, <laughs> one beer does not make you a man. I've always been able to do that. I can do it on command. Yo, where's your second beer? Sometimes I like to look straight one, at you. One beer doesn't make you a man, but one man up your ass makes you a woman. See that shit? Um, that's no joke. That's the real thing. Right now. Wording. Uh, me and me and Tom have a five-minute time limit before we go to bed. Joe, where's your second beer? With each other. <laughs> yes, it's exactly. right here. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say right now, baby. <laughs> right now, you gotta finish it. I mean, that's Joe, just a beer. You have five minutes. Like a whole third of it. <laughs> just a beer. It's like you cracking open half a can, and then stick your panties in there because you're acting like a bitch. No, his thong is deep in there with his fucking <laughs> bloody tampon. Dude, at least I set the expectation. I let you guys know what this is what was going to happen. Not set it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I feel like Gilman is, is showing us all up. And... Oh, no oh, shit, fucking, dude. What yeah, the he, fuck? 
He I, fucking showed us up. There's no doubt about that. I mean, next time we're always, doing Edward Forty Hands, which hopefully will be never, because I'm sure this this show is I'm just like people are just like you guys fucking suck. We have 